everybody please be silent. In a lot of ways, we started this place to do the work we wanted to do and that the children of West and South and West Philadelphia deserved, um, but weren't necessarily getting in the schools they were in. So, you know, 14, 15 years of dreaming and scheming. Can you get Clapper a miracle? Come on, Pip. I imagine college should have dorms all over the place for some. I don't know why. I imagine college like on the movies and stuff. So at the end of the 10th grade year, we want them to start to, to think about, well, what am I going to do after high school? Because that transition um, for this population is really difficult. And, um, and so we have a few different pathways. One is the automotive pathway. One is the kind of construction design entrepreneurship pathway. We have an internship pathway for students who are still trying to figure out what their interests really are. And then for students that are certain they want to go to college, um, we have a college pathway. They're actually doing it. It's, it's not, we're not doing a college prep class where we, you know, fill out worksheets and such. They're out at CCP doing the work. The reason I chose to go to the workshop school because when I was in eighth grade, they came like to, you know how high schools come to middle schools to try to make you come to their high school. So the workshop school actually came and they said that school started at 830. So that really piqued my interest because my other school, we started school at 7.30 and I had to wake up earlier. So I was like, okay, so we start at 8.30, that's good. So that's mainly why I signed, I applied to this school to come here. But then when I came here, I found out about the college track and that was nice because main, most other schools, they don't have that. My braid look cool. When I came here in ninth grade, it was like, and me comparing it to my old school, it was like, okay, we don't get, we don't get homework, we don't get tests. How am I supposed to go to college and be ready for college? So the first batch of ninth graders that officially came, it was around, I'm going to say 60. And I was a part of that, that first year that they was actually doing it. <laughs> um, and so it sort of began with that notion of, like, how do, we, how do we make school about real stuff? And that was kind of the kernel of the idea for, for the workshop. But then when I came here, it was like, all right, this project base, this going to be, I like doing projects. I love projects. Probably just the best. And I was like, all right, so. Then I don't gotta read a book all the time. So I don't gotta sit and read books all the time. I get to actually do things. Um, so we come to school like 8.30 in the morning and we don't leave till like 12.50 after lunch because the college classes start from two to four. And then so we're here for like four hours doing projects and stuff and then we go to, to the college class. There are very few schools in the country where they will pay for you to take college classes while you're still in high school and you can start earning college credits. So the three options that we have is Penn for some students, Drexel and CCP. Um, the classes I've taken was CCP and Drexel. As much as it's about sort of earning credits or anything like that, it's really about the experience and how do they sort of build the know-how and the social capital um, to know what that world is like so that when they transitioned into it full-time or part-time if they're also working, they kind of already have a skill set in terms of navigating that world. As I said, Drexel, you know, they're more white people. <laughs> and um, I feel like maybe the classes are a little bit more structured, I would say. Also, uh, the one thing about CCP is that it kind of it kind of prepares you, you know, helps you, you know, to get to where you want to be at. Uh, I think CCEP is more student focused, I think. In Drexel, it was, I feel as though if I was the only one who chose that mass media class, I was the only one that was going to like me. And it was going to either be Asians or white people that was in the class. Nobody else would, I would never felt comfortable and stuff in the class. I'm looking for an environment that's like welcoming. Everybody say, our college is welcoming, but when you get there, it's like super duper dry. Like, um, on the news, actually Cabrini, they've had like racial slurs is going around and stuff like that. Like that, before, I wanted to go to Cabrini, cause you know, even though I don't play basketball, but they said they basketball program really good. So I'm like, all right, I could go watch some good basketball. But now it's like, I'm, that's not my college for me anymore. So I feel like if the environment is good, it's going to set up the whole entire college to be uh, the best experience ever. I think there's a, 
there's a piece of this that we still haven't fully tackled yet, which is how do we help students really feel like they belong in these spaces? We've, we've had this moment walking around all the universities. I'm not picking on any single one in Philadelphia where a group of our students comes onto campus and they get the, and we, we've felt it. So when students struggle, I think they immediately sort of see that as confirming evidence for like, oh, this place isn't for me. I don't think my father finished college. Nor do I think my, I, I don't think either of them finished college. I'm, I might be lying about that, but I'm pretty sure I'm like the first one in our family to like attend and finish college, if I do attend and finish college, so. And so also my parents, like my mom, my dad, they all proud of me and they're happy that I chose that track because I'm actually doing good at it and they wanted me to go to college because neither of them went to college. Um, my mom stopped at high school and my dad, he stopped at high school too. I think he went to some trade school, but Nobody ever actually went to college, so they want me, they want me to do that to better my life. Um, my family is from Africa, um, from Liberia. Yeah, um, my mom loved education. She loved education, even though she wasn't able to get the proper education. Like when it comes to education, like she's like, she's like, if I was, if I had the chance, I really wanted to get education. That was my, my goal, like that's why I really wanted I don't care about nothing else. I really want an education. And me being able to like do this is like, all right, so now what y'all gonna say when I come back? I'm what, okay, I'm y'all ain't going to college, I did. So it's like a little brag and I get to do. Uh, my mom says she's really proud of me. And um, yeah, my sisters and them, they like, I wish I could do that when I was in high school and we didn't really have that many opportunities like that. So carrying out for my mom and them, so. It's super important while they have the support of the school and the school staff to start to expose them to those outward facing experiences um, so they can develop some of that agency. I feel like I actually enjoy college better than high school. Ms. Canelli is a real outstanding teacher. Um, but at this point, I'm getting to a point where I'm not getting frustrated with her class, but like I'm getting frustrated with having to manage her class in high school. Um, even though it's not, it's not, it's not hard. But when you want to do so good and everything in every little piece of work you do, like it's very hard to manage it. Um, if I was just aiming for a C in in his class, or the work he gave us in the C in her class, and the work she gave us, it would be easier. But I'm always aiming for the best, so. It gets it gets real hard. And then I got a lot of things going on at home too. So I'm trying to manage everything, but I'm thinking about just, I'm thinking about succeeding in high school first. The traditional pathway that I followed and that a lot of people follow where it's like high school, college, work, grad school, work, right? Whereas I think more likely for a lot of our students, it's going to be high school, College work, college work, college work, college work, right? Well, next year, we get to choose our own college classes, so I was thinking about majoring in psychology. And so after I graduate from workshop school, I'm going to continue to you know, follow my major. And I was thinking about going to Villanova. Yeah. Because if I follow my major there, I could probably also be on the basketball team. So, yeah, I'm trying to get to the WNBA. Like, before I thought business was me. Like, when I want to go to college, I want to study business as a major. But now I feel like psychology. Like, that's, I think that's what I like the most. Like, I know it's weird when you tell people, like, oh, I want to be a writer. And you, like, talk to other writers. You go to writing programs. And, like, nobody, they're like, oh, sure, follow your dreams. Nobody ever tells you that. It's, like, it's super difficult to, like, get your writing out there and actually like make money off of it. But like ideally, like writing novels, making money off those novels, that'd be, that'd be awesome. No, I'd rather have a career than a job actually. Cause I feel like a job is something that you just do so you can get, so you can make it through the week, get through the months, things like that. But a career is something that you actually love doing, that you're dedicated to, that you would, that you would do for, actually do for free. What we want for all our graduates is, um, 
conscious choices. That when they walk out of here, they walk out with a choice that's theirs and a plan to, to, to get there somehow, some way. It's like no one's listening to these students and how can we help them be heard and help them be successful? Because I don't want them to have all these great ideas and then graduate and not do anything about them. But they're brilliant and I hope they go on to do really awesome things. I think college is going to be great. I know it's corny, but the, the kids are amazing. Not today, Dr. Clapper. <laughs> I do it. <laughs>